Guys, welcome to the Amuna Project. This is uh, Chad Livingston. Thank you so much for watching another Amuna video. Studying a little bit with the kids today, and there was a story that came out, and I was thinking how amazing it was, and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope you love this uh, beautiful idea. So um, have you ever ridden with someone, a passenger in a car, and maybe you do this yourself, <laughs> who is like an extremely nervous passenger? They're convinced that whoever's driving has no clue what they're doing. They don't know where they're going. They're in the wrong lane. And they're constantly like putting their foot down on the ground and stepping <laughs> like they have the brake themselves. They're trying to make their own turns or they're, or they're telling the, the driver, hey, make sure you turn here. Make sure you um, stop sooner, speed up, slow down, all that stuff. So the passenger is having a really like his heart is thumping and going crazy in this experience in the, in the car. And um, I know from experience that this can happen because my mother-in-law for sure is this whenever I'm driving. <laughs> she even said um, whenever my uh, oldest daughter started um, her, she got a learning permit. She even said, well, I hope you learn from your mom and not from your dad. <laughs> so uh, We get this in our own family, you know, straightforward. So imagine, however, that the passenger actually trusted the driver okay um like if you're on an airplane you don't see too many people in the airplane like trying to you know yell at the at the pilot like you actually trust the pilot that the pilot's doing what he's doing so what you can do and you see this a lot on airplanes the people sit back and they're reading a book and they're maybe taking a nap you know they're like they're in a lot of comfort because they trust so imagine when the when the passenger is trusting the driver you know he's confident that the driver's getting them where to go where they where they want to go like we don't we don't um radio up to the to the uh or we don't ring the bell for the stewardess and make sure that she asks the pilot if for sure we're heading to denver like that's not that's not the case we're always just trusting that that's going where we want it to go and that is how a person lives whenever they whenever they're when they're wanting what hashem wants then you are living like the passenger in the plane that's trusting the pilot or the passenger in the car. Um, he's optimistic. You know, we're completely satisfied and, and everything is secure. I don't have any issues. Okay, so the challenge is that that's pretty easy to do when you're on an airplane because you're used to seeing, you know, hey, I know this is going to Denver. It said so on the sign and they even, you know, checked my ticket to Denver. So like you, you can have a lot of confidence. But what happens whenever you need to feel that way when you're dealing with a situation that you don't want like for sure you wanted to go to denver so it's easier to trust so what about if you're in a situation that you don't want okay so this is the story we we're reading earlier today so there's a boy and he's on his way to shul and it's uh, it's shabbat and he trips over um a crack in the sidewalk and falls and breaks his ankle okay so now instead of going to the Shabbat services and instead of davening and instead of having a beautiful meal and instead of doing all the mitzvahs associated with Shabbat he's sitting in the ER waiting to get his ankle um, taken care of so in his head he's thinking wow I can't believe this happened I am not able to you know to do this I'm not able to do that I'm in a lot of pain you know my ankle is throbbing and it's burning and everything is heading in the wrong direction, right? We often have that same kind of thoughts in our heads. When something happens to us that we don't want, we begin to think everything around us is heading in the wrong direction. Our imagination begins to take over. So if you were asking that young boy, why did you get yourself in the situation? How did you possibly trip you know, over, the, over this crack in the sidewalk? He might because he's a, he's a good religious boy and he says, it's what Hashem wanted, okay? The problem is for us is that we can say this is what Hashem wanted, but it's not what we want, and that's why we get angry. That's why for myself, I really have to work on anger because I have this picture in my mind about how things should go, and especially, you know, like with texting. Texting can be so short and brief, and somebody will say something to you, and it's so easy to take it in the wrong context and to just let your mind run with your imagination and go in the wrong direction and then you're immediately reading between the lines and responding and say bam 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 
here is this and I'm responding in anger. So what we talked about yesterday was like whenever you feel that emotional surge, then you need to stop and pause for a moment and then wait. <laughs> and then what you need to do is you need to forget about the path that you believe should be the way, right? Forget about the path that you had in mind and then trust the detour that Hashem has put you on. Trust that what is happening is exactly the best thing and the best possible route for you. It's not what I asked, it's not what I wanted, but it is what Hashem wants. And that means that it's for my best. I also read a story from, um, uh, it's called Imuna, Living Imuna for Teens, uh, as we study that with the kids. And there was a story of a rabbi who had a really serious kidney uh, disease in his kidneys, kidney disease. And he got diagnosed with this, and shortly after he was diagnosed with this kidney disease, he was bitten by a very poisonous snake. And, hi there. My daughter is parading behind. Um, so he's bitten by a very poisonous snake. Do you want to say hi? And he, um, he has to you know, go, and he's got to be rushed to the, the specialist to take care of the poison from the snake and all of this stuff. And 10 days later, so after all that is done, 10 days later, he goes and he's getting his kidney checked out again. And they run all the tests and the disease is completely gone. His, his kidneys are 100% are perfect. So what had happened was Hashem had specifically put the snake exactly in the right spot. He specifically called this guy to be in that same spot as the snake and made the bite happen and all of that to take care of the issue that was going on in the kidney. So for sure, if you ask that guy, like, would you have wanted to have been bit by a snake? <laughs> that was not in his like life plan. He was not planning to get bit by this poisonous snake and have to go through all of that struggle and all of that issue. But it is exactly the right thing. It was the, it was the best possible thing for him at that moment. So um, the question was asked when we were chatting with the kids was, wouldn't it be awesome? And I, I think of this sometimes too. I reach out to business mentors and stuff. And I think, wouldn't it be awesome if you had someone who could tell you exactly what you need to do every moment? Like you just say, I've got this question. I need to know if I'm going to go in the right direction or what. And I could just reach out to them and they could always tell me exactly what to do. They'd always know exactly what would work out best for me. Well, for sure you would call them, right? <laughs> well, listen, if you have a Muna and you're calling out to Hashem, that's exactly what you have. You need to call out to Hashem don't forget, we were saying you have to call out to Hashem in truth. It has to be sincere. You can't be hiding something. You can't be trying to get some sort of work around. You have to be honest. You have to be able to say, Hashem, I actually suffer from getting angry and I need help. So you, But He knows exactly what you need. He is the one that you can call on when you need an answer. And He has the answers. And you may be privy to the reasons why he takes you on the detour. And you may not be privy to the reasons why he takes you on the detour. But the wonderful thing is that you trust, if you trust in the detour, you'll have a life of satisfaction and you'll be optimistic, you'll be satisfied, and you will be truly happy and secure because you trusted in the one who has the absolute best plan for you. May we all be blessed with immense trust in our Creator. Be well.